Scotland, who is the Justice Secretary. She's right about that, isn't she? Hard, hardly deal-making mode. Well, I think we need to draw a distinction, John, between uh, the Luxembourg government and the talks with uh, Monsieur Juncker. And clearly, after the discussions with him, the uh, discussions between the UK and the EU are going to pick up pace and intensity, and they'll start being daily negotiations. I think that was the important... When will they start? Uh, well, say, we've, only got, we've only got a matter of days left. <laughs> the, the, they, they've already started, but they will pick up now in terms of intensity, and they'll become daily. And that's when you get to the meeting of it and of course the European Council are meeting in mid-October so we still have weeks in which to deal with this. I agree with you, of course time is short but I believe that with that concentrated period then minds will be concentrated and I very much hope that the deal that uh, we want to achieve will be forthcoming. I have to say I haven't heard anything that Mr Juncker has said that makes you leap in the air and say oh we're going to get another deal don't worry about it. Well, look, I think, I think the fact that he's committed to greater intensity in the talks is progress. Well, that's just jargon, isn't it? Greater intensity in the talks. I mean, either you're talking or you're not. Well, no, well, they're, they're talking. I mean, David Frost, uh, the uh, government representative, has been out there weekly, uh, and that will now become daily, and, and I think that is important. Uh, Do you know what? Forgive me for interrupting you, but uh, there was a very senior minister on this very programme a week ago who said exactly the same. <laughs> in, a, in, in a very short, it'll become daily rather than weekly. It still hasn't become daily, has it? Well, um, I, I think what, what's important is, is not just frequency, but also substance. And, uh, you know, I accept that uh, so far what we've been doing is looking at ideas and testing ideas. There will, of course, come a time when we'll be looking at the detailed textual analysis, uh, and it's then that I think we'll see the shape of something emerge. We mustn't make the same uh, mistakes, frankly, that were made before with negotiation. We have to deal with this very carefully. We mustn't uh, put up something that becomes uh, you know, unrealistic or a hostage to fortune. Let's uh, you know, be careful and uh, considered in these negotiations. That's what the UK government is doing. Uh, and yesterday, I I think uh, the signs from Mr Juncker were, were real progress. And that, I think, rather than the unfortunate uh, media stunt that Laura's described, uh, is the real takeaway from yesterday. Yeah, but the really important decision is going to be taken very soon, isn't it, by the Supreme Court. And if they rule against Boris Johnson, then what do you do? Well, look, I, mean, I know you're going to say we'll have to wait to see. I yeah, understand, I understand, understand that, John. But uh, in, indeed, but you must have thought this through. You must have given it a great deal of thought. And people, I think, probably are entitled to know what the outcome, what what the effect of that would be. I mean, we surely couldn't see, could we, a prime minister defying the highest court in the land? Well, I think the prime minister has made his, his point very clear that he respects the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law, as I have done repeatedly. Indeed, it's part of my oath as Lord Chancellor to do that, and I repeat that today. Uh, however, I've learned You've from many... You've the word hope there, though. I no, mean, no, the... I, my, my, my oath as Lord Chancellor. Oh, yeah, oath, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, what, what, what I would say, John, is that, you know, years of um, being involved in, in litigation and reading judgments has taught me that you mustn't anticipate until you read the precise wording of any judgment. That is entirely proper. In fact, it shows respect for the court rather than speculating about what they may or may not do. They've got three days of argument. I'm going to leave the argument to the lawyers in the Supreme Court. Uh, and frankly, me making any further comment would be inappropriate. Right. But you, you could um, make a comment on whether it is even remotely conceivable that Boris Johnson could suspend Parliament again. Well, you know, we got... I mean, it feels in politics, John, you might, might agree with me that, you know, Harold Wilson said a week is a long time in Indeed. politics. It seems like an hour is a long time in <laughs> politics at the moment. And for me to sit here and imagine what might happen at the end of October, I think, is idle. Uh, what I do know is that we, I, 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 if we are able to, we will have a Queen's speech in mid-October. Uh, there will be debate during that time and a vote as well, and perhaps a series of votes. Uh, and I think Parliament has already shown its power Power. You know, we it had a week in, in September where it made a pretty significant uh, legislation, and I think the idea that somehow Parliament has been, uh, you know, prevented from having its voice doesn't seem to be borne out by events, frankly. But we know what Parliament wants, don't we? And Parliament wants an extension. 
Well, the will of Parliament has been to pass that Act. Uh, of course, the trigger point doesn't come until after the Council of Ministers. The government's policy is to achieve a deal. Uh, that's what we were just talking about. That is um, evidenced by what is happening. That's our policy. A deal to leave on the 31st of October. That's what we will uh, aim to do and continue to strive for. Uh, and but I think you are required by Parliament to ask for an extension. Well, in certain circumstances, and uh, that, of course, is yet to be uh, uh, used. And well, we know again, what those circumstances are in, in, in truth, don't we? We yeah. know that Parliament is utterly opposed to leaving without a deal, with, 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 without any qualification. That is the reality. Well, the reality is that they passed an act which uh, has a certain mechanism in it. Mm. The position that we adopt is that we are striving to get a deal uh, because we want to leave on the 31st of October. We want that clarity and that act, of course, uh, in effect, hands over the initiative to the EU and hands over the power to uh, determine what might happen uh, to them. Well, um, that is the whole point, isn't it? Because w when, when Boris Johnson says, do or die, you know, we'll, we'll leave what may deal or no deal he can't say that i mean and this is where perhaps the prime minister of luxembourg was right and and others have talked to the french politician earlier he used to be the europe minister uh, the, the fact is he puts his hands in his pockets as one of them rather unkindly said and makes these announcements and they are simply not true they cannot be true well, uh, I think, um, you know, I've mentioned this point about, about an hour being a long time. There is a long way to go here in terms of the detail of what might be negotiated. And I think anybody who seems to uh, not believe the government when we say that it, we are in deadly earnest when we want to deal is just wrong. You know, there's plenty of evidence that we do. We're striving to achieve that. And through a deal, that will allow us to leave on the 31st of October. But, um, you know, John, I, I very much hope that when we get to that point. The uh, Council of Ministers will have met, will have made its decision and will have much greater clarity as to uh, what both sides uh, can achieve. And I still believe, and I very much believe, that uh, the public would expect Parliament to crack on and pass any necessary legislation to allow us to leave on the 31st of October because more delay just means more uncertainty, more cost uh, and the sort of political stasis that frankly has but gone on for far too long. Yeah, but Parliament is, is well aware of the mood of the public, notwithstanding the mood of the public, Parliament has made certain decisions, decisions which Boris Johnson will have to obey, won't he? Because you said earlier that the, he's not in the business, you're not in the business of defying the law. Well, for the purpose of this, then Parliament is the law. Well, a, a, an act of Parliament's been passed. The Quite. will of Parliament is, the law. is there. I mean, look, what I'd say about this whole process is that, as we saw from the previous extension, you know, this isn't a, a walk in the park. You know, the Europeans need to have a very good reason why they would extend and the, the noise and, and the discussion and the substance that I hear uh, would suggest in many respects that they are not at all inclined to do that because more delay is more uncertainty for them it's in the mutual interest right. of both UK and Europe to crack on with this and so, so that we can leave by the 31st of October. A uh, quick question for me about the unduly lean <coughs> excuse me, the unduly lenient sentencing scheme which will uh, take more uh, convictions into account stalking, harassment of children, child sexual offences. You may have heard um, the uh, prison's governor on the programme earlier saying that actually this is, that the governors are uneasy about it, it will mean keeping people in prison for much longer and there is no ability, they don't have the ability to rehabilitate them, so therefore it could, could re be really a rather a bad thing. Well, with, with respect, uh, I, I don't agree. Uh, as Solicitor General, I admi helped administer the, the unduly lenient sentence scheme for a number of years and I took a number of cases myself to the Court of Appeal and I've met victims of crime who found that they achieved a higher degree of justice. What we're talking about here, John, is probably about 100, 150 or so cases out of the 80,000 that are dealt with in England and Wales every year. It's very much a safety valve that the Court of Appeal themselves determine as to whether or not they think the sentence was way too low. It's a high threshold. It's one that is applied by the Attorney and Solicitor General after full legal advice. Uh, what I'm doing is really tidying it up by making sure that sexual offences, including possession of uh, appalling images of child abuse, are covered by the scheme, and also stalking and coercive control two fairly new offences that uh, I helped to bring in are also covered so that we can give victims and indeed the public a higher degree of confidence that our courts are
consistently getting it right. Robert Buckland, thank you so much indeed.